This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today I'm going to show you how I made a set of cheap, easy to build, fully functional doors for my modular dungeon tile system using the same basic techniques established in the first two videos. Link down in the description if you want to see those. When designing these doors, I wanted them to serve a few basic purposes. Number one, I wanted them to be about three inches by three inches to match the existing tiles and walls that we've already built. Number two, I wanted them to actually function so I don't have to build separate open and closed versions of my doorways. Taking inspiration from the 3D printed ancient evil city crawler doors that Colin from Instagram designed a while ago and printed me out a set of, I decided the doors would function like this. A separate frame and door piece that slides down through the top and this way if I ever want to make variant doors or variant doorways for different dungeon environments, it's really easy to do so. For the first step, I cut out a ton of 3 inch by 3 inch squares from foam board. Once again, this is just the cheap stuff from the dollar store. We're not removing the exterior paper or anything. I want to keep this quick, easy, and cartoony rather than realistic. And if you're following along at home, don't worry about making your squares especially perfect as we'll be doing lots of trimming and carving away at these later to make them all fit together. Once you have a few of these cut out, you'll need two for each doorway you want to make, by the way, we can move on to cutting out the door shape. And while we're here, I'd like to introduce you to the newest tool in our dungeon crafting arsenal, popsicle sticks. Once again, in line with our dungeon crafting ethos, these are cheap, widely available, easy to work with, and specifically I'm using these as a framing device to add structure to our doorways. When measuring out the doorways, I went with a rough dimension of two popsicle sticks thick on each side, or about three quarters of an inch, one popsicle stick thick on the bottom of the doorway, and about half an inch thick on the top of the doorway to match the arches on our walls. And after doing about two of these, I decided to just make a template. And you can find the full plans for this template over on my website at howlcorp.com slash dungeon tiles. And as it turns out, it was extremely easy to put those on a website thanks to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website and hosting platform that I have been using for a decade now for all of my website needs. You just pick a template that looks good to you, add in any pages you might want, adjust the styling to your liking, and move the elements around using their incredible, intuitive drag and drop grid system. No coding or technical knowledge required. I've been using my current Squarespace website for a bit over a year now to house all of my hobby reference documents, dungeon tile templates, as well as my merch store. So if you need a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. I made my personal dungeon tile template out of cereal cardboard, specifically Fruit Loops. And you can do the same if you'd like to make a template for doorways of your very own. Once I had the template, I just traced out the doorway on each piece of foam core that we already cut out, made marks on it for where each of the brickwork is going to be later. And after this, I drew on all of the remaining brickwork using a pencil and the notches on the template as my guide. By the way, these match roughly with the walls that we created in the last video. With this step complete, we can now cut out the doorway using our hobby knife. And once you've made at least two of these, we can frame our doorway to make it usable using popsicle sticks. For the bottom of the doorway, we're going to need a roughly three inch piece of popsicle stick. So to make this easy, I like to just mark the stick with a pencil and then use my hobby clippers to remove the excess. Once this is done, we can glue our first stick onto the interior of the doorway using PVA glue or my preference, tacky glue, which is, I think is just PVA glue that dries a bit faster. And after this, we can frame the two sides of the doorway and we don't need to be nearly as precise for this. For these, I just roughly cut a popsicle stick in half and then I glued two of these pieces to each side of the doorway. Finally, we're going to cut one more popsicle stick in half and glue these pieces right down the middle of each side of the doorway framing, all the way down to the bottom of the doorway this time. And while this may seem excessive, it's going to really help stabilize everything and form the core of our door rail system, as you will soon see. Finally, follow these exact same steps for the other side of the doorway. I said you would need two of these, so just do those same steps a second time. 
And once those have had a little bit of time to dry, we're going to glue our doorway sandwich together using even more glue. You're then going to want to probably weigh it down with something and give it a good amount of time to dry, at least an hour if it's tacky glue, probably more than that if it's PVA glue. Once the doorways are dry, we can finish them up by carving out the individual bricks using the same techniques used for carving stone in the previous two videos in this series. And at the same time, this is the step where I like to carve off any excess from the doorways that makes them less than square. After this, we're going to need to cut down another small piece of cereal cardboard to size to form the floor of the doorway, both for aesthetic reasons, but also so that our doors won't sink into the floor of the doorways. I've chosen to paint mine using the same painting techniques and patterns that I used in the first video in this series, so just reference that. And now we get to the fun part, making various doors to fill up these doorways. For today, I've chosen to just make a simple set of wooden doors. And as with everything in this dungeon tile system, I took a good amount of inspiration from Wylock, especially his recent video on doors, doors, doors. So make sure to check out his video on how to make doors as well link down in the description. And while I was planning to use popsicle sticks for this, I found that stir sticks looked even better as they are a little bit smaller, have a bit more obvious wood grain, and you can make three doors out of just six stir sticks. To start out, I measured and marked the sticks so I would know where to cut them later. And then I cut out a ton of thin strips of cereal cardboard to serve as the metal banding that will keep these doors together. After this, using my door template I previously made, I glued two strips of cereal cardboard to each door section on the stir sticks, gave them a little bit of time to dry, flipped them over, and then did the same thing on the opposite side. And after giving this whole piece a good amount of time to dry, at least an hour, I used my hobby knife to separate the stir sticks into three different doors. And after this, I used my scissors to cut off some of the excess strips of cardboard from the doors leaving just a little bit on the edges of each one to help them fit into the doorway rail system better. Once this was done, I glued some of these spare bits of cardboard onto the door to serve as the lock box for these wooden doors. And that's pretty much it. Once these are fully dry, we can move on to painting and details. For the metal banding, the first step is going to be adding a coat or two of our Mod Podge and black paint mixture to all of the cardboard parts on the door and give these at least an hour or two to dry. After this, I like to remove the graphite from a mechanical pencil and use the tip of it to create rivets in the metal banding, as well as a sort of keyhole in the door lock section. Once this is done, we can add color to our doors, and I would encourage you to be creative at this part and use whatever colors or paints you would like. Doors do not just have to be a plain wood color. Personally, I wanted to test out how Speed Paints 2.0 might work as a wood stain, so I mixed up a 50-50 mixture of ghoul green and burnt moss, to get a nice cool dark green wood stain and applied this to all of the wood parts on the doors. After this, I wanted to add a little bit of rust and grime to these doors, so I roughly painted some on using the core brick color that I used for the dungeon tiles and a dabbing motion with my brush. Finally, I wanted to add just a touch of a metallic tone to the metal pieces, so I used some copper paint and brushed it on really lightly just catching the edges of all the metallic parts on the doors. And that's it, our doors are done. Once again, the nice thing about these is we could make as many alternate doors as we want, depending on what setting we want these doors to be used for. And we could also make different archways if we wanted to as well, and they will all fit together in a mix and match kind of way. I just really love how versatile these are, and I would love to make some variations on them in the future. If you've been enjoying my new foray into dungeon crafting this year, please feel free to let me know down in the comments, as I would love to keep on making more videos in this series, and let me know what kinds of other stuff you would like to see me add to this system. Thank you to all of our lovely patrons for supporting the channel. I really appreciate your funding and your help. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I will see you in the next video.